Welcome back. The Cisco India Summit began in Jaipur this year with a heightened emphasis on cybersecurity. A study released by Cisco has revealed that just 24% of organizations surveyed in India have the mature level of readiness needed to be resilient against modern cybersecurity risks. Ashmit Kumar caught up with the Cisco top brass on bolstering cybersecurity and their growth plans. Give us a sense, uh, because while we're here in Jaipur, you've also in fact released a report which releases some startling numbers mm -hmm. in terms of uh, readiness and preparedness for cyber security threats. So tell us, as people go hybrid, as organizations go hybrid, how big of a concern is that, one? And two, are organizations acknowledging it and are they prepared for it? Yeah, so uh, the study that we are releasing, we're launching it here. It's not an India report, it's a worldwide report. So we surveyed as part of the Cyber Security Readiness Index we did a study across 6,700 cyber professionals in 27 countries. Now, the India data is, is rather interesting, right? 80% of Indian organizations that were surveyed as part of that study said that they had faced a security breach in the last two years. And about over, just over 50% of them said that the cost of returning to normalcy was over half a million dollars. For 14% of them, over a million dollars. Mm. So. And this is, you have to keep in perspective, this is, when people give out these numbers, they're usually talking about the cost of returning to normalcy. And what is usually not accounted is the long-term cost of reputation loss or data loss. Mm. So is it a big problem? Yes, security resilience is a big concern for enterprises and organizations more broadly. And it's not just businesses, right? One number I'd like to call your attention to was from your very report, the global report, which also has the India chapter to it which talks about only 24% of the Indian companies being fully geared for facing these challenges. How worrying is that number? It is very worrying. I mean, it is very worrying. And if you look at, I mean, there are three transitions that all organizations, and when I say organization, I even mean government institutions, right? And healthcare facilities and such. Um, three things are happening, right? Firstly, a lot of uh, the conversation around devices, right? There is an IoT analytics study that says that 27 billion devices will get connected uh, by 2025. Now you have to expect that something similar will happen in India as well. Uh, then there is a human aspect. You know, as everything gets connected, everybody is an insider. And this is the worrying factor that companies in India are increasingly calling out malicious insider activity. And again, almost 50% of organizations we talk to are reporting malicious insider activity. That is actually a little bit higher than the global uh, standard. And hybrid work is not going anywhere. What is going everywhere is the perimeter of the enterprise, which used to be a fixed boundary, but is now fluid and going where the users are or to where the access is, so security has to follow. So all of these transitions, if you notice, are opening up gateways into unprecedented and very unique security challenges. Great. Uh, let's now talk about uh, one area that is a big in terms of uh, a, a worry for a lot of people looking at the next 12 to 18 months, and that's essentially the big R word. Uh, we were just discussing, it's almost like a placebo, whether we're talking ourselves into one. Uh, but on a more serious note, talking about uh, tech companies in particular, we've seen a rout globally. There are concerns in terms of what the next 12 to 18 months hold. Uh, there have been layoffs as well. Cisco, of course, was also compelled... Uh, to issue pink slips, give us an indication of one, this global picture, how it's looking to affect you, and how India for you is positioned as a part of this uh, uh, dynamic global environment. Yeah, so we actually, uh, you know, uh, we announced a uh, restructuring, Ashmit, that is, that is correct. But we also did say that at the end of the fiscal year, we'll be the same number of people as when we started the year. And that is because technology is changing and we need to continuously lift and shift our people into new, new areas of focus for the company. Um, I do not want to speak for some of our peers uh, in, in the industry, but I suspect they are also doing some of the same, right? And they're also uh, trying to optimize and get prepared for a new world or a no normal world. Um, as far as the India market goes, I think India is quite resilient. Now, is there a degree of caution and scrutiny in the technology space as regards spends? Certainly, yes. But are people holding back spending money in critical areas in tech? No. And I think the reason for that is COVID has taught us better than anything 
that technical get debt is not a great thing for companies to live with. And it certainly is not a formula for success in the long term, mid to long term. So scrutiny and caution, yes. Um, blocking spends, no, we don't say that. Uh, one focus area uh, that we have at CNBC TV 18 uh, is broadening the conversation about gender diversity and gender inclusion. And towards that end, we recently uh, had launched this conclave and this campaign called Future Female Forward. The idea being more inclusion of women, more participation by women. Uh, you're a woman leader yourself, right at the helm of the company, heading the India SAR corporations. What I want to ask of you is that while we're beginning to see uh, more women in boardrooms, more women in executive roles, there's not so much participation at the workforce level. For the IT sector itself, uh, I think the number in terms of women inclusion uh, is, uh, we mentioned, mid-30s. Uh, while that is significantly uh, above the national average, uh, what can be done at the ground level to encourage more women participation at the workforce level? So, Ashmit, thank you, first of all, for that conversation. I think it's a very critical, it has now become a critical conversation. Uh, India's dream of becoming a $5 trillion economy cannot happen unless we up the participation of women in the workforce. Um, and frankly, COVID has not been kind to women. Right? Uh, the equity gap, now the UN says, the path to true equity will take, we thought 130 odd years, which it was before COVID was bad, but then now the UN is talking about 300 plus years. So thank you for that conversation. Very, very critical one to have. Um, the IT industry in India, while the mid-30s may not look as a true representation of our society, um, it is a poster child in many ways because the tech industry worldwide is, is not at that level of representation for women. What the IT industry has done very well, and maybe there's a model, perhaps there's a model there for other industries to follow, uh, is the intake. It's, it's solved the intake problem. So if you look at the women coming into the workforce, they, women and men coming into the workforce early in career is almost equal in most, in most companies. The problem has always been to solve for the middle. Life events happen to women, marriage, maternity, caregiving, and then the choice, and women want to do justice to those roles. I think they have a right to do justice to those roles. At that point, they fall away from the workforce. Bringing them back has to be a much more active. So intake is important, so getting them uh, getting entry-level women into the workforce is important. Getting the middle sorted out is important. And it, unless the middle is sorted out, you know, the pyramid is anyway the shape in every organization. So if you lose the middle, then the women stepping up into leadership and then from there into board positions, it's, it's going to be a pipe dream.